Hello, this video will cover section 5.2, compound interest for the class math 1324. The video will focus on effective rate or annual percentage rate, or also known as APY, and we will be covering the examples 8, 9, and 10. So the first concept that we have here, um, the annual percentage yield or APY to abbreviate it. Um, I'm going to read what is here. So suppose that you invest $100, so that's your present value, and that is compounded monthly. So we have a 12 here, present value, and we have the interest rate being 9%, so we use 0 0.09. And then here we have the exponent, and the time here is just 1, so t equals 1. And that's another reason why here the exponent is just 12. For compounded monthly, it's in fact 12 points, point, times 1, and it is just 12. So the year that will be accumulated if this, in, if this amount was compounded monthly during the first year will be, um, the future value will be 109.38. So if we want to find what was the interest earned, um, of course, you know, we will subtract the present value from the future value and so this was 109.38 minus 100 and so that will give us 9.38 so that is what we have here um, as the earned interest and so if we convert that into a percent um, that will be 9.38 38 percent of the original $100. Now this is an easy one to convert because the original amount was $100. Let's assume the original amount was $200 then you will have to multiply um, 0 0.0938 times 100. So in other words, 100 invested at 9.38% compounded annually will produce the same amount of interest as 9%. So here we have two cases, compounded annually, that rate, and then we're going to say that 9% compounded monthly. Um, so in this situation, 9% is called the nominal or st stated rate and that goes to back to monthly nine percent monthly that means the interest gets recalculated or compounded 12 times in, in a year and then we have here compounded annually with the highest interest rate at 9.38 so that one the 9.38 is called the effective rate or the annual percentage yield, APY. Um, this is widely used in credit cards um, because the interest rate that they charge you, they actually divide it into 12 and they convert that annual rate into a monthly rate. So um, what the variable that we will be using to denote the effective rate is going to be the letter lowercase r for rate and then we're going to have a subscript E for the um, to represent the effective rate. Um, we also use APY to denote effective rate, and APY stands for annual percentage yield. So the APY or the effective rate is a simple interest rate needed to produce the same amount of interest in one year as the nominal rate does with more frequent compounding over the year. So remember, <clears throat> simple interest rate, it's like section 5.1. And here we're going to compare that one to the one that will be calculated in one year. which we refer to as the nominal or stated rate. And we say compounded, um, more frequent compounding. So in this case, the one that we have here, 
it has monthly. So that tells us um, more frequent compounding. Now, since you're compounding more often, the interest rate, the nominal rate is going to be smaller. Like here we had for nominal, we had 9%. And then for the effective rate or APY, in our example, we had 9.38. So just to go over this box again, this was simple interest rate, that is our APY or R sub E, and this was our nominal rate, that's the one that was compounded um, monthly. So from here, we're going to go and start um, example uh, eight. And we have here money market accounts. In July of 2016, American Express offered its customers a money market savings account at a rate of 0.90%. Assume the account compounded interest daily. So that is relevant. And the principal is 100000 now. The principal is another way to say the present value, the amount that it's put in at first or initial amount. Now, the question here is to find the APY. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to compare both. Um, and we're going to create like an equation here. Now, let's write down some of our um, quantities that we have. So for rate, we have 0.90%, and if we drop the percent symbol, this will become 0 0.0090. That will be the rate that we use as a decimal. Um, we also have the present value. We already have it here. And then for compounded daily, that means that M is equal to 365. Okay, so what we're going to have on the left side is um, the same principal amount, 100,000, or present value, at rate R sub E, effective rate. And just so you remember, this is calculated at simple, with simple interest. Now, on this other side, we're going to compare that to the same amount, present value or the principal, at 0.90% compounded daily. So if we use the formula for simple interest to calculate future value, I'm going to write it here. That was something like present value from 5.1. And then we had R, I'm sorry, 1 plus R. And then um, we're just calculating for one year. So this will be um, 100,000. And remember, we're talking about the effective rate. So instead of R, we're going to use R sub E, like that. Now what we're going to do is compare it compare it to um, something with the compounded daily. So I'm going to write down the formula first that we will use. Future value is equal to the present value, parentheses 1 plus r to the power, in fact, it's r over m, sorry, r over m, and then it is to the power m times t. And I apologize, this formula is wrong right here. I'm missing T, the one for simple interest. 
which we have a T here. And what happens is that uh, since we're just talking about T equals one because it's one here, then once we multiply one for T times R, we just get the effective rate. Okay, so now on the right side, we're gonna use the present value. That is the same, 100,000. Now we're gonna have one plus 0 0.0090 divided by 365 to the power M, remember, was daily, so it's 365 times one. So eventually it will just be 365. So after we enter that on the calculator, well, in fact, we're gonna solve here what we're trying to solve for is R sub E, which is the effective rate. And so one thing we can do is divide by 100,000 on both sides because we do have it on both sides. So if we divide, we know it's gonna cancel or in other words, it will equal one. Now all we have left from the left side is one plus R sub E. And on the right side, we have this expression, one plus, and then we have this um, fraction, R, which is that, divided by 365 because it is compounded daily. And then for our exponent, we have 365. So now if I want to solve for R sub E, which is what we are trying to accomplish for the effective rate, that will equal to one plus whatever we already had on the right side, to the power 365. And now what we will do is this positive one, we will take that across the other side of the equal sign and it will um, go from adding to subtracting. And so that will give us um, what we need. Now, if we were to plug in all this on the calculator, the answer will be 0 0.00904. And so in other words, um, remember that is in a decimal. So if we want to convert that to a percent, um, this effective rate will be, uh, and I'm going to do that by moving the decimal point two units to the right, because I'm multiplying by 100. So it will be 0.904%. So what this means is that that rate with a simple interest in one year will generate the same amount as if we had this uh, interest rate compounded daily. Um, you see 0.90, it is smaller than 0 0.904, slightly smaller, but um, it generates the same amount of interest because the one that we have up here is being compounded daily. So it doesn't matter that the rate is slightly smaller. What, um, where this one, the effective rate is at simple interest, just like the formulas that we used in section 5.1. So now we're gonna move on to example nine. And we can see here on top of the slide, we have the same formula that we um, derived by working, by creating an equation and then equaling the simple interest rate, which is the effective rate, and the other rate uh, that was compounded daily. So now that we have the formula, we could go ahead and um, use it. So we have here another problem about money accounts, and it says when interest rates are low, as they were when the stacks went to press, the interest rate and the APY are insignificantly different. To see when the difference is more pronounced, we will find the APY or the effective rate for each of the given money market checking accounts which were advertised in October of 2008. So that's quite a long time ago, 11 years ago. So we have here the first um, um, bank. And so we're gonna say that the rate is 0 0.0335. Uh, we also have here compounded monthly. And remember T is just gonna be here one year. Um, that's what we focus on with the effective rate. 
So the effective rate, the formula to find that, it will be 1 plus R over M, parentheses, to the power M. It will always be M because 1, uh, T is supposed to be 1. So even if we were to multiply by 1, it would still be M. And then we subtract a 1 at the end. So let's substitute what we have. And, and that will be 1 plus point zero three three five divided by 12 because it does say monthly here close parentheses uh, to the exponent 12 and then we have to get out of the exponent and subtract a one and so that one uh, will give us point zero three four zero one nine um, and so if we change this into a percent, the effective rate or the APY will be 3.4%. And so as you see, because it is simple interest, it is slightly higher than this one that was supposed to be compounded monthly. Now let's compare the other one that we have here. So here R is equal to 0.0233 is compounded daily, so M is equal to 365. So if we use the same formula that we used uh, on the previous problem, and so it's going to be the effective rate is going to equal to parentheses 1 plus, now the rate that we have here, we need R over M. And it's important to mention that we need parentheses around that as well. 0 0.0335 over, in this case is daily, so we're going to use divided by 365. We close parentheses once, we close again, and then we need the exponent of daily, which is 365. After that, you need to get out of the exponent, subtract 1, and that will give you an effective rate of 0 0.0235. 7, 2. And so that one um, gives us the effective rate as a percent. It will be 2.35. There's a 7 after, so I guess I'll just put 2.357. Um, to answer this type of questions on my math lab, it is important that you read how they want you to round to. Okay, so I'm going to do the last problem of this video, and the next video will cover problems 11, 12, and 13. So for example, 10, money market accounts, um, we have three banks that we're going to be comparing. So we have Bank A offers a three-year money market account at a rate of 1.80% compounded annually. Then we do have Bank B offers a similar money market account with a rate of 1.77 compounded quarterly and then finally we have here bank c offers a 1.75 percent compounded monthly so we're gonna do one bank at a time so for bank a uh, we have the following the rate is 0 0.0180 and m happens to be one because it is annually and so if we want to find the effective rate for that um, bank um, we need parentheses one plus r over m to the power m and then minus one and so if we substitute here r sub e will equal to one plus parentheses 0 0.0180 well, here we're dividing by one, so that parentheses is not that necessary. And so if we enter all of that into our calculator, we're going to get an effective rate of 0 0.0180, um, which as a percentage, it will be 1.8%. And so that is the effective rate for bank A. Now for bank B, Uh, we're talking about a rate of 
0.0177, and it is compounded quarterly, so we're going to use m equals 4. Now, if we enter all of this into our formula for effective rate, recall we need 1 plus r over m, so 0 0.0177, m is equal to 4, and this is raised to the power of 4. After that, we subtract a 1, and what we will get from there is 0 0.0178. So what this is, is that R sub E, the effective rate or APY, will be equal to 1.78%. Now, finally, we have um, bank C. And so that R sub E is equal to 1 plus the rate for bank C was 1.75, and so we're going to use 0 0.0175, and that one was monthly, compounded monthly, so we need to divide by a 12. The exponent is also a 12, then we subtract a 1, and the result for that will be 0 0.0176 which as a percent for APY or effective rate, it will be 1.76%. And so the question was, compare them and then answer which bank, which bank offers the highest APY. And so there is no doubt that the highest APY will be offered by Bank A. And this concludes this video. So.